Hello, my name is Father Timothy Tai, and this is our 187th segment of our journey of faith in the light of the cross, and I thank you so much for joining us as we begin our 32nd chapter. We look up on the screen for the theme. Chronicles gives Bible students hints to understand how Judaic sexual morality evolved in the oral tradition, especially Yetzer, a word in Genesis. It's very important. For this oral Torah was accepted by the New Testament church as inspired by God, just like scripture. We go on to our next screen and we read. The oral tradition began in the Babylonian exile, but was acknowledged only during the Maccabean War in 168, so about 400 years later, because of an extreme dilemma. In observance of Torah, the Maccabees refused to fight on Shabbat. Thus, many were slaughtered. They decided that a violation in defense of Torah was not a violation of Torah. This interpretation was possible only if there was an inspired oral tradition. Oral Torah was continued by Pharisees and rabbinic tradition and the church in the light of the cross. We open it up in the light of the cross. We go on to the next screen. Our source for our information is What is Judaism by E.I. Feckenheim on pages 68 and 69. The Jerusalem Talmud was redacted in 500 AD, but the much larger and more authoritative Babylonian Talmud was completed about 550 AD, 1100 years after the Babylonian exile, but much larger and more authoritative than Jerusalem. There are four traditions related to the oral Torah or tradition. One, an unbroken tradition links the written Torah to the oral Torah. From Moses to Joshua to elders, that's the priest, to the great assembly, the Sanhedrin. It did not begin in Babylon, but in the wilderness. They later realized there was always oral tradition, even though it was magnified during the Babylonian exile. We go on to the next screen and we read. Secondly, Oral Torah must be in the hands of a scholarly community, not an individual. And this was contradicted like Jesus, who was a clear authority of one. Now we go to number three. Oral Torah must be steeped in the study of written Torah. For oral tradition produced commentaries upon commentaries, a piety so grandiose and unique to Judaism that Hillel said, an ignorant person cannot be pious. This is a real problem with the scholarly tradition that we're entering into. It really looked down on uneducated people. Number four, the Torah is inexhaustible. Turn it and turn it, they mean the scroll, for everything is in it, constantly producing new insights. And that is why we study it. We go on to our next screen. And we read, this oral tradition produced Midrash, part of the Talmud, which uses stories and parables. They do not give answers and are not binding. Yet Midrash is the most profound and most indigenously Jewish and hence most authoritative theology in Judaism. The Mishrashic element is called Agadah. We go on to our next screen. And now we get to the important part. The far more authoritative element of the Talmud, the oral tradition, is legal discussions or halakha. The laws expressed in halakha are binding. Thus, strictly speaking, there is no orthodox Judaism. Orthodox means correct teaching. The correct term is orthopraxy, correct practice. What does he mean? For how can the teachings of Hillel and Shammai both be the word of the living God, when their controversies are mostly of a halakhic nature. In theory, both are true, but in practice, the general rule is to follow Hillel. Okay, now we go on to our second source, Every Person's Guide to Jewish Sexuality, and it's by Ronald Isaacs. This book gives many examples of oral Torah's sexual morality. We go to page 134. 
The essence of Judaism depends on sanctifying yourself during sexual intercourse, saying aloud, for the sake of the unification with the Holy One, blessed be he and his Shekinah. That means his radiant glory. Do not let your yetzer, and he uses the Hebrew word, it's interesting, to become too heated during intercourse, but cleave your mind to the holy Shekinah in unification of the supernal lovers. This is very important. The yetzer tends to get out of control. If you're going to act like a eunuch during the week and be non-threatening, you have to have it under control. We go on to our next screen and we read, Page 138, traditionally, the evening of Shabbat is set aside particularly for fulfilling the mitzvah of sex. The mitzvah is a command of sex, not just instinctive sex. Some very pious people have sex only on Friday night. On one hand, the pleasure of sex contributes to the joy of Shabbat. On the other hand, the holiness of Shabbat helps to raise up the sex into the realm of spirituality is important to the church because Shabbat is the day of love when love is lifted up to God as we lift up to God the gifts at the Offertorian Mass. Now the person he is a great man who conquers the inclinations of his imagination to control himself. You have to go back and look at segment 36 about the Yetzer. That's how we understand it. We go on to our next screen. Cling to the Holy One the source of life, then your sex will be holy and not dragged down by the yetzer. Dragged down by the yetzer. Hasidim suggests a preparatory meditation on God's presence for all spiritual practices, especially Torah study, prayer, eating, and before sex we can also meditate on God's presence. A suggested meditation is to think you are in the Garden of Eden where Shekinah light is revealed. Sex was holy and pure in the garden before sin. We must control the great gift of Yetzer, especially in exile where we must come across as eunuchs. Christ redeems later the Yetzer, but what does that mean? We go on to our next screen. Yetzer is translated by modern Jews as inclination. Old Bibles, especially the King James, translated in imagination as the first mystery, the first command, you shall have no images before me. The inclination for sexual images is very strong. Brief, isolated ecstasy is more intense than long-term marital love. Now we go back to what is Judaism and we read for the Yetzer, page 95. Genesis 8, verse 21. The inclination of the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. God repeats the same words at the beginning and at the end of the flood story. In Midrash, a yetzer is called pitiful, that means a person, indeed if called evil by its creator. Now, he used the Hebrew word because the word for God creator is yotzer, which means Yetzer is a godlike faculty to help God create the world. We go on to the next screen and we read, For Yetzer was God's gift to man to co-create his kingdom here on earth, which the apostles were able to do. But sin used Yetzer to create hell on earth. So a great man has to have complete control over the inclinations of his imagination, the Yetzer. The rabbis agreed that the world was in need of redemption and redemption was sure to come. And the church likes that message. Our mission is to understand and live how Jesus redeems Yetzer into a blessing. And again, we remind you to read segment 36 on Yetzer. We go to our next screen and we read, Chronicles gives Bible students hints to understand how Judaic sexual morality evolved in the oral tradition, especially Yetzer, a word in Genesis. For this oral Torah was accepted by the New Testament church as inspired by God. Thank you so much for joining us for this 187th segment of our journey of faith in the light of the cross.